Hello friends, I hope everybody's doing good. Okay, so today we're working on a Boland uh, lawnmower and that has a classic rigs on it. And the story with this right now is that um, on the cold start, I prime it, I start it, it stalls, prime it again, it starts, it stalls. Um, I cleaned the carburetor on it a couple of times, I had it all apart. But the one thing I didn't do is I didn't change the diaphragm and gasket. And what I'm going to do right now is I'll just show you what it's doing. And I'm going to run up the street to the lawnmower re repair shop and pick up a diaphragm and gasket. Um, I'm thinking that could be the problem. So let's get to it and I'll show you what it's doing and we'll get it on the table and take it apart and in the meantime I might just run up the street and uh, get a diaphragm and gasket for it. Since today's Saturday they're only open a half a day so. I thoroughly cleaned out the uh, carburetor and I'll, I'll show you what I did exactly when uh, we get it on the bench and take it apart so for now we're just gonna start it up and I'll show you what it's doing. So it's, it, it is priming very well, but like I said, it starts and then it stalls. So I don't know if it's that. I did a full service on this the, at the end of last year and I put a brand new uh, air filter on it. And I changed the oil. And I either sharpened the blade or changed the blade. I really don't know why. But. Okay, once it starts and I keep priming it, it'll... It'll stay running, but it's not running right. So we're gonna have to try to address that. As far as the spark plug goes, I don't know if I replaced it or just cleaned it. I'm not really sure, I really don't remember. But it's not the car, it's not the spark plug that. So let me get set up and we'll pull the carburetor off. I'm gonna have to get the uh, serial number off just to, they always want a serial number when I go up to the lawnmower repair shop, so. Uh, I'll be back to you in about a second or so. Okay, so we'll begin by taking off the air filter here. Now you just use a flat blade uh, screwdriver here. Okay, you can clearly see this is like a brand new uh, air filter on here. Then you're going to take a half inch socket. Well, first, this uh, breather hose here, crankcase breather. It's a, like an L shaped hose. You can just pull, go ahead and pull that off. Make sure there's enough gas. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it has plenty, plenty, plenty of gas. So. Okay, then you're going to use your 3 8 socket. In metric, I think you could use a 14 millimeter on the half inch. Or you can use a 10 mil millimeter, but I always use a 3 8 on the uh, front bolt here. There's a front bolt that you can clearly see right here. And that holds the carburetor and gas tank assembly on. And then you can just wiggle this off here. And then you have your uh, governor linkage that goes into the carburetor here. And if you just tilt this uh, gas tank, 
you can get that Z bend off here. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take this uh, off the off the table here so we can work on the carburetor. And there's one more other thing I want to show you with this carburetor when we get it apart. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is there's five Phillips set screws that hold the carburetor to the gas tank. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. What the heck is going on here? I always like to pull these screws completely out so you don't lose them. Okay, we have two more to go here. I know we could pull the carburetor off the top of the tank. Okay, so now we can just pull this right off here. Okay, so you have the gasket and uh, diaphragm here. The diaphragm always goes on first against against the tank. Now on this one here, it didn't have the spring. So the second time I had this all apart, I had another carburetor that has this spring on here. But some applications take this spring, some don't. And I think this is one that doesn't take that spring. So, and as you can see, the spring doesn't even fit in, on there tightly. It's just like, I, I don't think it's supposed to take this spring here. So, I don't know if that was a mistake right there I made or... I don't know. I'm not sure. With this, I went as far as taking this. Uh, I took this screen off here where the main jet is housed. And in here, I used a real tiny, like an eyeglass uh, screwdriver. And I just popped this whole main jet out and I cleaned that out real good. I don't see any reason why there should be a problem with this carburetor. So I'm kind of leaning towards the uh, diaphragm might, may not be good. If uh, worse comes to worse, I do have another carburetor I could try to clean out on it. But... I don't know, this is pretty collapsy here. I don't know, it's soft. So... It could be that the diaphragm did go bad on this. So I'm going to go up to the um, lawnmower repair shop and I'll be back to you in about two seconds. And I'll go just buy a whole new uh, gasket and diaphragm for this. Okay, so I came back from, from the uh, lawnmower repair shop and all they had was the diaphragm. And this is the Briggs and Stratton OEM number right on here. So what we're going to have to do is try to save the gasket off the old uh, diaphragm here. 
and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm not sure that there's anything really wrong with this diaphragm here, the old one. I'm not really sure, but that's what we're going to start with. If worse comes to worse, I have another carburetor we could clean. So you're just go, going to want to peer, peel the uh, diaphragm off the old gasket here. Okay, so the gasket appears to be in pretty good shape here. So I think we'll be all right using the old gasket. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open up the package and I'll show you exactly what to do from there. Okay, a funny thing here, and the girl was going crazy up there too. Uh, the thing is, the gasket comes with the diaphragm right in a one package here. So I'm gonna call uh, I'm gonna call them and tell them for their future references, because I know they list the uh, gasket separately from the diaphragm, but on the package it didn't say diaphragm and gasket. So let's go ahead and install all this. Let me make sure I have the camera on. And yes, we do. And you're pretty much in uh, view here. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to put the um, you're going to put the diaphragm on first. You're just going to lay it on here and get the holes lined up the best you can. Okay, and then you're going to take your gasket, which we'll be using the new gasket. And then you're just going to place your uh, gasket on here. Try to line the holes up the best you could here. You can even just take a screw and uh, make sure you're lined up the, before we drop the carburetor on. That appears to be right here. Um, another thing, that little spring I was talking about before, we're not, we're not going to use that because I'm pretty sure the last time I didn't lose that. So you got the gas cap facing towards you, so you're going to want the primer bolt to face towards you. That's the easiest way to uh, get, the, get the thing back together right. So, so far the gasket moved, diaphragm moved, everything's moving around here. So, just try to line it back up the best you could. And then just drop the carburetor down here, and then you get get your screws back in all right now I'm not gonna film screwing this thing back in so just remember you have the diaphragm that goes first against the gas tank then you have the gasket then you could drop your uh, carburetor on okay so in here you're gonna see that you're gonna have a retainer and then inside of that is the o-ring okay that's the carburetor intake gasket actually so sometimes these retainers pop out and you just want to make sure that the O-ring is in there and this retainer just clicks right in. This one stayed in, it didn't come out, so we're good with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this thing back together now. And like I said, you have that Z-band linkage that has to go into the carburetor here, into the uh, throttle linkage here. And you're going to have to tilt the carburetor like so catch that and then when you straighten it out the linkage is hooked up and you saw how i took it apart we're gonna get it together and then i'll put it on the floor and see if it starts i don't know i kind of don't have faith in this i think we may end up having to uh clean out the other carburetor i have for it but let's see what happens okay so i have it all back together and just to let you know you're going to need the serial number off the engine itself not the tag on the lawnmower so on the uh recoiler shroud here you see this plastic piece here i actually took this off so i could clean that and i took a picture of it before i went up to the lawnmower shop here and it's right under here right alongside the uh starter housing so just to let you know you're going to need that information to order parts especially if you go to the lawnmower place they always want the serial number off the engine. 
go. Let's see what happens here now. Not right. It's no good. It's no good. Maybe there was still air in the system and the gas had to get circulating. I don't know. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this away and we're going to do a cold, cold start on it tomorrow morning, which will be in about a second or two for you. But, I mean, it's hunting a little bit, a little bit of a surge, but not too bad. But we'll see on the cold start tomorrow morning if this thing's any better. So I'll see you then about a second or two. So it's the next day now, and the engine is ice cold on the lawnmower. And after the last segment, I let the machine run for about 20 minutes straight. It seemed to be running pretty good. It wasn't hunting or anything like that. But the important thing is, is the cold start. We'll see how the cold start goes. Another thing I forgot to mention, the diaphragm and gasket that I bought for this up at the, the uh, lawn, lawnmower repair shop. It was under $5. I think it was like $4.80 or something like that. So, uh, I gave the business to the mom and pop store there. If I ordered it, it would take days to come anyway. But, let's see how this thing uh, starts today. I'm going to um, give it a few primes. As you can see, it's ice cold. I just took it out of the shed here. Okay, so it started right up with three primes, and um, it didn't need, need any uh, help. You know, if, in the beginning of the video, it stalled, you saw that. And then I started it up again, and I had to keep priming it, and then it finally started running on its own. There's a very little bit of hunting going on here, but I'm pretty sure that this carburetor should be fine. I'm going to let this thing run for another 15, 20 minutes or so. So, this video was... Uh, about changing the uh, diaphragm and gasket on there which I didn't do and I did clean the carburetor out what about three times altogether and um, I hope uh, this video helps somebody out here and I want to thank everybody for watching and stay safe